Good morning. We start these noon meetings principally for business and professional men and women with about five minutes of meditation. I truly believe that in the course of time, every church and every temple throughout the world will be open at noonday for a period of spiritual refreshment. And this spiritual refreshment must be brought about in two ways. First, with meditation, and second, with a passage of scripture, since man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. To understand the part of meditation, let us see for a moment this city with its water pipes extending back into the reservoirs. And then behind the reservoirs, the snows, the waters, the wells that feed the reservoirs. The city represents individual man. The reservoirs the vine the master speaks of in the 15th chapter of John. The vine that is always one with its source, with the Father. I and my Father are one. This is a relationship not between God and the human being. This is a relationship between God and the Christ being, the spiritual being. And so the reservoir will represent that vine or Christ being which is within us and uh, the snows and waters and wells that feed the reservoir will represent God. Then God and the Christ, God and spiritual man are always one. But the human being has become a branch of a tree that is cut off and withers and dies. And therefore this branch must now become united with the vine or reservoir, the Christ within himself. And meditation is the way. Within you and within me is this Son of God, this great reservoir of spiritual being. It is always one with the Father or the divine source of life, immortality, and uh, the substance of all that appears. And in meditation we turn within and we require no words, we require no thoughts, because in turning within we are virtually declaring uh, that within me is the kingdom of God and I am now turning within for a conscious union with this Christ, the Son of God within me. I am turning within for spiritual contact with the indwelling Christ, which is always one with the Father. And as I am one with the Christ within me, I am then fed by those waters, those snows, those wells of life eternal. And so the meditation is a period of spiritual renewal 
when we make contact with the reservoir indwelling and receive from it the spiritual grace with which it is ever at one. Now these periods of meditation should take place not only at noon, but for the busy person out in the world, whether business or professional man or woman or shopper or marketer or busy housewife, this period at noon must be a period of spiritual renewal. And the meditation is the first part. The second part has to do with a revelation of Paul's. <clears throat> if you sow to the flesh, you will reap corruption. But if you sow to the spirit, you will reap life everlasting, life harmonious, life peaceful, life successful. And uh, we must now place a higher interpretation on this passage than you ordinarily associate it with. In our language, the language of the infinite way, to sow to the flesh means to have placed your power in the world of form or effect. That is, to believe that your health is in the body or in a medicine, that your supply is in dollars or investments or property, that your happiness is to be found in people, that your safety and security is to be found in arms and ammunition or an army, a navy, or a police department. This is sowing to the flesh. It is placing your hope and trust in the creature rather than in the Creator. It is to place your hope in that which is created rather than in that which created creation. To sow to the Spirit which brings the reaping of spiritual harmony, joy, and peace, means to have placed your faith, your hope, your reliance in the infinite invisible. The difficult part of this is that because you cannot see, hear, taste, touch, or smell the infinite invisible, it is very much like the Bible passage, he hangeth the earth on nothing. You are really beginning to hang your faith, hope, and reliance on nothing that you can see or hear or taste or touch or smell. It is dropping all hope and faith in anything that is external and uh, putting the full hope the full confidence in the unknown, the invisible. This is sowing to the Spirit. Now, in one way or another, and with one passage of Scripture or another, these periods of noon meditations are to be conducted. First of all, so that you may consciously realize that there is this reservoir of spiritual grace within you, always at one with the infinite source, and that your contact with this spiritual reservoir within you is at the same time your contact with infinity, with eternality, with immortality, 
with divine harmony. And then, that this particular passage of scripture today, sowing to the flesh we reap corruption, sowing to the spirit we reap life everlasting, must be consciously with us throughout the rest of this day. Each time that we are tempted to think of safety and security as coming to us from without or from some person or persons, or each time that we are tempted to believe that our health is to come to us from without, even to the extent of believing that it is to come from a person or from a book. You see how throughout the rest of the day we abide in the consciousness that the kingdom of God is within me and that this fountain of life, this reservoir of life within me maintains and sustains my individual integrity, my individual capacities and abilities, my individual safety and security is guaranteed from within. In this way, we are starting the active practice of living the life of withinness. This has really been the goal of people throughout all ages, but only a few have found the way to enter this life of withinness and to be outwardly fed by this inner reservoir this inner fountain, this inner contact with the Christ of our being. This is not to be understood as a quarter hour of escape from the world, but a quarter hour of contact with the inner sources that provide our safety, security, success, harmony, abundance, health, joy, peace, in the busy world. It is a turning within for the inner grace that is to establish us in all of the affairs of the without. In other words, seeking first the kingdom of God within you, you find that all these things of the outer world are added unto you. But remember our passage of today. We must sow to the Spirit. We must place our hope, reliance, confidence, trust on the fact that it is this inner self, Christ, Son of God, that is the meat and the wine and the water even the resurrection in our human experience. And so you see with a combination of meditation and abiding in the Word and letting the Word abide in us, we go out spiritually refreshed, spiritually fed spiritually sated and spiritually guided and governed throughout the rest of our day. And we are established in God's grace. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Again, we have had our five minutes or seven minutes of meditation, and you will see how this functions for us. The object 
of all spiritual teaching is to change us from the material basis of living to the spiritual awareness or spiritual consciousness of living. The difference is this. In the material sense of life into which we were born, we live entirely to the externals. That is, we live uh, by persons and things of the outer world. To a great extent, our dependence is on persons and things of the outer world. We love the persons and things of the outer world, and at the same time there are those we hate or fear in the outer world. Now, as we make the transition into spiritual consciousness, we reach that stage where, first of all, we no longer hate or fear anyone or any combinations of ones, whether persons or things, in the external world because we have made contact with the kingdom of God that is within us. And now we no longer live by bread alone, by the world out here, but rather by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, that is, every word that we receive within ourselves. Now, this is all accomplished through contemplation, inner contemplation, and meditation. And yesterday we used the illustration of uh, ourselves as the city connected with pipes to the reservoir, and the reservoir in turn connected with the waters and the snows and the wells from out of the universal. We as individuals have contact with the Spirit of God that is in us, the Spirit of God that dwells in us. And uh, that Spirit of God we will now recognize as the reservoir. But this reservoir, or Spirit of God that is within us, is one with God, the Father. And it is because of the relationship with God the Father and the Spirit of God within us, which is the spiritual Son of God, or the Christ, it is because of their relationship that we, by tuning in to the Spirit, draw forth all that the Father hath. It is for this reason that we hear within, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. This is God the Father speaking to the spiritual Son that is within us. God the Father says to the spiritual Son, the Christ of us, Son, thou art ever with me, all that I have is thine. And then the function of the Christ, that Spirit of God that is within us, is to be our bread, meat, wine, and water, our resurrection, our life eternal. And therefore, we must attune ourselves or at one ourselves with this Son of God that is within us, the Spirit of God or reservoir. Now today we will understand this same relationship through the illustration given in the 15th chapter of John by the Master, in which he refers to this Christ, or Son of God, 
as the vine. And he tells us that we are the branches. Each one of us is a branch of the tree of life. And as we are one with the vine, that is the trunk of the tree, and as that vine is one with the Father, the source, down through the roots into the ground, then are we three in one. In meditation, then, we may think of ourselves as this branch, a branch that as humans is cut off from the vine and withers and dies, but a branch which, as we attune or at one ourselves with the vine, with the trunk of the tree, we now see that because the trunk of the tree is one with the roots, and the roots is one with the ground, and the ground is one with the rain and the snow and the sunshine and the minerals that are in the earth. So now, by virtue of our being at one, we the branch, being at one with the trunk, the Christ, and the Christ being at one with the infinite source, now all that God has is flowing through the Son of God, the Spirit of God in us, out into our individual experience. And therefore, we are now enabled to say, cease ye for man whose breath is in his nostril, for wherein is he to be accounted of? I no longer live by man, nor do I fear man or hate man, now I can see man as detached, as just another branch of the same tree. And therefore, I do not live by virtue of uh, husband or wife or parent or investment. I live now by virtue of my oneness with the vine which is within me and its oneness with the universal source of all good, God the Father by consciously knowing this truth constantly we actually attain a complete and permanent oneness with the Christ and from then on in we begin to live by grace rather than by might or by power we begin to live through the gift of God rather than through the sweat of our brow. This is the transition that we are making from humanhood to our divine sonship. And so then, the meditation which we have in this noon period is a period in which we attune or at one ourselves with this vine the kingdom of God that is within me, knowing that it is in at one or attunement with infinity. And this gives us an opportunity to walk forth from here spiritually renewed, spiritually fed, spiritually clothed, spiritually protected from within. And this, in the rest of the day, will appear outwardly as protection wherever we go, as harmonious human relationships. This is a point we must bring up this week. How this, attuning ourselves to the Spirit of God that is within me, attunes me to the Spirit of God that is within you so that we really become one, as indeed we are in spiritual truth. You in me, I in you, and both of us in the Father. And this you will see also 
comes about as a realized practical experience through this period of meditation. Now every time throughout the day that you permit the thought of your relationship to the vine within and of the vine within the Son of God to the Father, each time that you do this you renew your contact with the spirit, with the spiritual source of life. Each time that you think of yourself as being attuned to the reservoir within you and then realize the reservoir receiving its fullness from the whole world of rains and snows and deep wells, every time you think in terms of these you are again renewing this conscious oneness, conscious relationship with your source and you are leading to the day when you will no longer have to consciously think it when it will take over your life and you'll come to a place that Paul revealed which comes to us all later in the experience. I live yet not I. Christ liveth my life. I no longer take thought for what I shall eat or what I shall drink or wherewithal I shall be clothed. I no longer look out to the men and women of the world or the governments of the world or the judges or the juries of the world. I now look only to a divine grace in which I am established because I began at a specific period of my life to know the truth. The moment you begin to know the truth, you begin to be made free. And this is the truth. The reservoir or vine is within you and it is one with the infinite source of all good and your conscious awareness of this brings it into manifestation. Can you not see what a wonderful purpose can be served if men and women throughout the globe could unite in a period for only a few minutes each day, two or more to gather together to realize their conscious oneness with this inner reservoir of life that wells up into, springs up into wells of eternal life. Please remember that the more often throughout the day and night that you open yourselves, your consciousness, to remembering any part of this truth, the more often you do this, the closer you come to the experience of illumination which means that period when you can say I no longer live my life. I live, yes, but it's really Christ that's living my life and I am just receiving its grace. Thank you. Good morning. This is the third of this series of noon meditations. And as a result of the first two meditation periods, you should already feel some measure of benefit or change, <clears throat> some measure of upliftment or release from some discord or fear or problem. And the reason is this, I would like you to understand these meetings 
so that you can engage in them understandingly because there is no mystery attached to them although very often there are miracles it is a matter of literal truth that, that there is a spirit of God in man that from the very moment of man's beginning God planted in him his spirit this is often referred to as the Christ or the Son of God but regardless of the name there is in every heart in every individual man woman child this spirit of God a mystical poet has termed it the imprisoned splendor that is what it really is it is an imprisoned spirit imprisoned behind our ignorance of its presence now in the emo in the moment when we first realize that God could not have set us adrift on earth and said here is a globe of so many thousands of miles get along in it as best you can and when you get wearied of it die this could not be the act of a God an omniscience an infinite intelligence a divine love any more than a human parent gives birth to a child and would then throw it out into the world and say get along as best you can no God has implanted his own spirit in us which is to be our bread meat wine and water our guidance and instruction our protection throughout our lifespan in scripture it says that this God is our high tower it is our fortress it is our hiding place it is our abiding place but above all the master reveals that it is within you and this is virtually a lost secret not that it isn't revealed in scripture but that it has been ignored for so many centuries until we have come to seek outside for our good instead of inside now as it is understood in uh, the spiritual life the mystical life this kingdom of God can be penetrated this hidden splendor can be released and it is released first of all in those who through their meditation make contact with the presence that is within them now the master revealed that I if I be lifted up shall draw all men unto me and this we understand in this way the moment that one individual attains the spiritual light those who are led to that individual are automatically lifted up into some degree at least of that light and receive the benefit of that light if you go back to the days of the master you discover that even the fishermen and the tax collectors 
by coming into contact with the consciousness of Jesus Christ were lifted above their spheres of life, above the materialism of their own living, into a spiritual awareness, a higher mode of life. Then as you go on you find that those who came in contact with the disciples were benefited, were healed, were uplifted, were fed. So it is throughout all ages that whenever one individual brings about the release of this imprisoned splendor, comes into the conscious contact with the Spirit of God that is within him, all those who are led to that individual find some measure of release from their problems, from their sins, from their diseases, from their lacks and limitations, and on the positive side receive inspiration in their business or art or profession and uh, again find the benefits of the spiritual life. Now, it is my function to meditate day and night, to live in conscious union with this inner source of my being which came alive so many years ago, so that those who come in contact with me shall benefit by that light. As a result of this, there are many of our students, some of them here in this room, others in this city not present in this room, who unite with me in meditation for the purpose of bringing this same light, the same release to those who attend this meeting or any meeting at which I am speaking, lectures, classes, so that it must inevitably follow that those who come within the consciousness of those of us who have attained even a tiny measure of the Christ light must first of all feel it respond to it and witness some fruitage of it in their lives. Now, the first purpose then of these meetings is that those of you who have not yet attained the ability to meditate, to make contact with this infinite source, the imprisoned splendor within yourself, that you, by bringing yourself here, may drop your fears, your doubts, your sins, your diseases, your false appetites, that you may find inspiration for your work, whatever its name or nature, and thereby be encouraged to continue on the path of meditation until this imprisoned splendor which is also in you is released and you are thereby enabled to live spiritually and to be a light unto others who may be led to you. So you see that this work has in it no mystery whatsoever. It is merely the revealed truth that one individual who has been spiritually opened or spiritually ordained may heal the sick, open avenues of supply, forgive sinners, remove false appetites, and therefore that those of us in all parts of the world who will engage in this particular activity expect to bring to the beginners a measure of release 
from their problems of the world and encourage them to enter the spiritual path so that in turn they may be the light unto others. Now in more than a hundred cities in the world and on six continents and many islands there are students who have received some measure of spiritual light through their study and practice of this message of the infinite way. And it is expected that in these cities groups such as this one will meet either at noon or evening according to the city, according to the possibilities of students and partake in a 15 to 30 minute period of meditation and instruction so that all present may receive spiritual refreshment. Now the first thing that you will discover is this, that the fruitage of this meditation is a spiritual refreshment, a spiritual renewal, so that you will have the feeling as you go out into the world that some measure of release has come to you from the problems of the world and some new measure of confidence, courage, hope or faith may be visibly present in your soul, in your heart, in your consciousness and you will find living easier, more comfortable, freer and then of course you will assert your own dominion and realize that under God you are entitled to a life of joy, of peace, of prosperity, of harmonious human relationships. And the measure of spiritual light that comes to you will be the measure of spiritual light broadcast upon the earth. Because be assured of this, that even in a darkened room, one candlelight brings some measure of light, and a dozen candles lit will bring that much more light to the room. And so it is that one individual, spiritually illumined, bring some measure of light into the darkened world. A thousand individuals spiritually illumined multiply this over and over and over again, releasing the world from its present fears, doubts and worries. Having brought yourselves into this atmosphere of God's presence, go forth spiritually refreshed and renewed. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. You will find as you continue to have uh, periods of meditation, either alone or more especially in the company of those who have uh, gone a step ahead of you in meditation, that it becomes easier to meditate for a full five or six or seven minute period. And then finally that your meditations deepen and uh, out of them comes richer fruitage. But because meditation itself has been a lost art for centuries and it has never taken root on the Amer North American continent, meditation is not easily achieved. 
It is for this reason that in our work we recommend never meditating more than five minutes or six minutes at a time until the ability to meditate grows and it grows better through these short periods. Now, the main part, or let me say the, the main function of this particular series of meetings is this. Ordinarily, we've learned to live our lives from waking up in the morning until going to sleep at night and leaving God very much out of our lives or setting aside some period once or twice a week or others even some period once a day for opening consciousness to God. And while this is all very well as far as it goes, it does not go far enough to bring the kingdom of God into our experience. The kingdom of God is attained only as we learn to keep the mind stayed on God, stayed on God, only as we learn to acknowledge God in all our ways, and this becomes really a practice. And it is for this reason that we have recommended, because of our own experience with it, periods of 10 seconds of meditation. 10 seconds of meditation every hour or every half hour or every time that you can possibly bring it into your thought and uh, these periods of meditation need not be sitting down quietly with the eyes closed they can be but if the occasion doesn't present itself these meditations can be while driving a car while doing housework while at business even in uh, the theater or movies even watching television because this requires only a momentary flash you might say a momentary glimpse let's see if we can illustrate this Right now, where we are, let us turn our attention inwardly, as if we were looking down into our chest. And uh, ah, the kingdom of God is within me. The kingdom of God is within me. Oh well, all is well. The kingdom of God is within me. And this is the end of that particular meditation. Just the reminder for a moment. The kingdom of God is within me. What does that do to us? It immediately breaks fear. It immediately breaks the fear that we're not in touch with God or that God is afar off or that God isn't aware of us or that God isn't aware of our problem. Just that momentary reminder, oh, the kingdom of God's within me, all is well, and then on. Let us suppose uh, we leave this room and... Uh, we're going down and get into an automobile or a bus. It only takes a moment to remember God is the mind of every individual. God is the driver. Or God is omnipresence. God is omnipresence. There is no place where God is not. 
out on the road or on the street. God is omnipresence. This is enough. Just that reminder that whether you are driving on the road or walking on the street or crossing the street, God is omnipresence or must be well. We are going to make a purchase or make a sale. We're going to be about our business in some way or other. And naturally the question arises, will I find what I'm looking for or will I find a receptive thought? And here's another opportunity just for that moment of reminder. God is the soul of every man. God is the soul of every man. I have nothing to fear. God is the soul of every man. I am approaching the God in man. And this is enough. I have a difficult problem or a difficult task to perform. Something that seems beyond me. It takes only a moment to remember he performeth that which is given me to do. He, the Father within me, perfecteth that which concerneth me. Just another reminder. Another reminder. Yes. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. It's just a reminder that we're doing nothing of ourselves, but that we have taken God into partnership with us. Except God be with me in this purchase, I may not find what I'm seeking for. Unless God be with me in this sale, I may not find the state of receptivity necessary. Unless God goes with me across the street, anything can happen. Unless God drives with me and every driver. But God is omnipresence. Huh? God is omnipotence. Think of the comfort of this. God is the only power. God is omnipotence. All power. Beside God there is no other power. Regardless of where we are. Driving on the road or walking across the street or going on a business trip. God is the only power. Now, the value of any one of these is negligible. It is the accumulated value that comes with praying without ceasing. In other words, developing prayer as a way of life so that we ultimately can say, I live my life through prayer, or I live my life by prayer, or I live my life with prayer. And this is the prayer, just these ten seconds that it takes to remember omnipresence or omnipotence. Just the few seconds that it takes to remember God is closer to me than breathing, nearer than hands and feet. You can't feel the power of this, thinking of it a few times, but to be able to persist in this day after day for just one week will enable you to feel the tremendous power there is in living by prayer. Now, there isn't any question of this. I doubt that there is any normal person anywhere in the world, but what will agree that the most successful way of living is a life lived by prayer, a life lived in communion with God, a life lived in attunement with God. But how can this be accomplished? Anything that is accomplished in your life must be accomplished by an act of your own consciousness. 
Now God is omnipresence, but that does no good to anyone except the individual who consciously accepts God. God must be consciously accepted into consciousness or God isn't functioning for you. That is why it is said in scripture, a thousand shall fall at thy left, ten thousand at thy right, it shall not come nigh the dwelling place of those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High, those who dwell in the consciousness of God. That is why the Master said that you are a branch of a tree that is cut off and withers and dies unless you abide in the Word and let the Word abide in you unless you actually live in the Word and let the Word live in you. Now we can't go around all day and it wouldn't really benefit us if we did go around reciting prayers all day. Formulas are not prayers. Made up statements aren't prayers. These are the vain repetitions talked about by the Master. Prayer is an utterance of the heart, not of the lips. Prayer is an intent of the heart, not an activity of the lips or of the mind. And so it is that when you open your heart to receive God, you are praying. When you open your heart to acknowledge that except the Lord build a house, I won't have one. You are praying to acknowledge omnipresence, omnipotence. You are praying. And so you are praying without ceasing as long as you are just pausing for a moment of realization. Thou art with me, or thy presence goes before me. Thy presence goes before me to make the crooked places straight, or thy presence goes before me to prepare mansions for me. These five seconds, seven seconds, ten seconds of opening consciousness to the presence of God in one way or another is prayer. And when it is done constantly throughout the day and night, it is praying without ceasing. The one major point that I would like you to see before you are a month older is that prayer really is the intent of the heart. Prayer is the motive of the heart. It has nothing to do with words. We don't even have to use words or thoughts in prayer if we just pause long enough to remember God. I have had wonderful experiences in life with the word Emmanuel or God with us. Just pausing for a second to remember Emmanuel, God with us. And having that as my motive, I've had wonderful days and weeks and months just with that word. Why? Because I didn't have to go into any uh, long explanations of what I meant. It was enough that in my heart I was accepting God as ever presence. Just the word Emmanuel means I've opened my soul, my heart, to the presence of God. I'm acknowledging God with us. I have had long periods of beautiful experiences with the word Messiah or Christ, because always the word Messiah brings up to me the fact that the Hebrews were always waiting for this Messiah expecting great things of the Messiah. And so the moment I say Messiah, 
I think of those great things that the spiritual presence and power is responsible for and the word Messiah instantly takes me into the word Christ because Christ is our word representing the Hebrew word Messiah. Christ and Messiah are the same. So Messiah brings up the memory of the Hebrews that were looking forward to this tremendous good and Christ brings up the memory of the Christian attitude and expectancy of good. Just think of what the Christians expect of the Christ when the Christ shall come. And then think that we don't have to wait for that. By acknowledging uh, Christ, now the Christ is come. No more waiting for the second coming. Now acknowledging Christ is come. Messiah is here. Emmanuel, God is with us. Making God in the present tense, bringing the Christ into the present tense, taking the Messiah out of the past and bringing it into the present tense and living now in the realization of God and then continuing that now virtually every hour of the day, every half hour of the day, because eventually when it boils itself down to one or two or three words, just think how quickly it takes place and then remember what tremendous things actually take place when we are living the life of prayer. When we are living by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God instead of living by human circumstances and powers. Do you see where we are heading with these noon periods of meditation they're only meant to lead us up to that time when we're living in it not only a quarter of an hour at noon, but when this is merely the period for spiritual refreshment and then to be continued every few minutes of the day. Thank you.